Alrighty guys, welcome to video two of my new shop series. We're gonna be building a sweet workbench today for my Atlas lathe and my mini mill. Before we get into that, I wanna show some quick clips of me adding some grommets to my flags so they can more easily be hung on the garage door. Now, I know this isn't the biggest thing, but I like adding a couple of the small things that are required when setting up a new shop. So that's why I put that footage at the beginning. The rest of it though is me making this really cool table that has leveling feet and probably will be around for my grandchildren to use. So with that, let's get to the narration. So we're just getting started off here cutting out some pieces. Notice that I'm using the abrasive chop saw here. This is before I purchased the cold cut chop saw that I reviewed in my last video. So I would have been using the cold cut in that scenario, but I didn't quite have it yet. The pieces I cut out there were two by two by a quarter inch thick, and these are gonna be the top and the bottom of our leveling feet. Since the abrasive chop saw leaves a little burr around all the edges here that I cut, took it over to the two by 72 belt grinder from Northridge and it cleaned up all of my edges. I don't want any sharp corners here, and I wanted some uh, rounded corners as well. So there are going to be six leveling feet which means that we needed 12 of these two by two by quarter inch pieces. On six of these pieces, I will be drilling a one half of an inch hole in the center of them. So what you see me doing here is marking out the center with some calipers, center punching them, and then stepping up the bits until we get to a half inch hole. To drill these half inch holes, I'm using my wind drill press. Now I got this drill press back when I started getting into knife making again and I bought it for a very cheap price, and so far it's done a darn good job, considering how cheap it is and also how much abuse I put it through. So I got some perfectly good half inch holes in here. We're gonna clean everything up and get to welding. The next step is going to be to line up these weld nuts that I got from McMaster car, and then weld these onto the plates that we just drilled holes into. This is gonna be the top of our leveling foot. To keep the nut lined up with the plate, I used a bolt coming through the bottom of my welding table, and then I used one of the clamps to hold the entire assembly together while I welded all four sides of the nut. You can see that my welds don't look the best here. I'm still learning at this machine, and it seems like every time I figure it out, I have enough of a lull in between welding projects that I forget the appropriate settings. So one thing that really helped me with my welding here was to decrease the wire speed I had it set at around 40 and I brought it down to 35. And I also maxed out the voltage on this machine. So I was welding as hot as it could. I'm running a Hobart 140 that's plugged into a 120 volt normal socket. I also made sure that my shielding gas, which is 75% CO2, 25% Aragon, is coming into my machine at around 25 to 30 cubic feet per minute. So this is how they turned out and now we'll move on to the other part of the foot. In order to get the bolts that I'll be using for the foot portion of the leveling feet, I want to grind off the heads of the bolts so that they sit flat onto the plates. Otherwise, you'll have the nomenclature on the head of the bolt causing it to not sit square on the plate. To do this, I rigged up a little fence on my 2x72 with some 1, 2, 3 blocks and we just ground the heads of these bolts flat. Now you may have noticed that one of these bolts is longer than the others. I must have lost one of the bolts because I only had five of the appropriate length bolts. So I ended up threading the rest of this store-bought bolt so that the entire thing has threads on it and could be used for this project. I've never done that before and it was a little tight, but it got the job done. Now I probably could have just placed these bolts on top of the plates to weld them. However, I wanted to try to get them as square as possible, so I decided to use these sweet fireball tool squares to rig up a little holding jig so that I can get these bolts uh, kind of in the appropriate position in the center of the plate and also square from all angles. So what I would do is I'd get this guy lined up, I'd knock it around from all angles to make sure it was square, and then I would just weld it onto the plate. So in a nutshell, that is how you make leveling feet for pretty much any workbench, table, or stand. So these are done for all intensive purposes, and now we'll move on to the workbench itself. One thing I want to note before we move on is that the threads that I used here are one half of an inch by 20. 
so I used the fine threads, and I feel like that gave me some more control when leveling these feet. So what you see me doing here is mocking up my lathe so that I can get an idea of how it feels at this height of 38 inches. This is the height I chose for my lathe portion of the workbench so that I can eventually roll a rolling cabinet under the workbench for additional tool holding. I wanted to make sure I had the clearance, so that's why I brought it up in height. So now we're going to be cutting out the rest of the steel for our project with the cold cut chop saw from Evolution. I recently did a review on this chop saw and I'll put it in the cards above. I want to note here that originally I wanted to build this entire table from scratch and keep my current steel table as a standalone. However, the steel prices are a little expensive nowadays, so I decided to add on to my current steel table with this lathe portion. All in all, it worked out pretty good because the original table was around 43 inches, which is the appropriate height for my mini mill, and I was able to do this addition without buying any steel. In order to do that, I had to make some add-ons here where I literally butt welded two pieces of square tubing together because I was short just a few inches. But with the steel that I had in the shop, I was able to get this project done. So the next piece that we're working on here is going to be the additional set of legs for the lathe portion of the table. Now this is the first project that I've been able to complete using my new welding table. And I tell you what, it is really nice not working on the ground with welding projects. Considering the price of the table, I probably should have bought this guy a long time ago. Now with this welding table, I probably could have fenced off and jigged up everything straight on the table and clamped all my pieces square on the table and welded everything together. However, I wanted to try out my new set of fireball tool squares just because they're new toys and I wanted to see how they perform. They did a really good job. I was able to get everything clamped up and it held them nice and square as I did my welding. So what I did is I clamped them up and got to as many of the welding areas as possible before taking the clamps off and this ensured that everything stayed nice and square during the welding process. Another nice thing about these squares is that they're made out of aluminum, so the welding splider tends not to stick to them, which is nice. I know they also make a cast iron version, which are a little heavier duty, depending on what type of projects that you're doing. After I got everything welded up, I took some of these cheap flap discs and cleaned up all the welds. In a lot of locations, I cleaned them up nice and flush, because I'll be welding pieces against this surface. So this is how everything turned out with the additional set of legs for the lathe section of my table. The next step here is gonna be getting everything out of the way so that we can get to the original table. The legs of the original table will have to be reduced in length so that we can add the leveling feet to them. Now moving this lathe around can be kind of a bear, especially when it's all put together. So I took this little cart here and shimmied the lathe onto it so that I can roll it around the shop and out of the way. So you gotta be a little careful when moving some of this stuff around by yourself because it can get really heavy and the last thing I wanna do is drop this beautiful 1920s or 1930s Atlas lathe onto the ground. So once we got everything moved around, we're gonna be laying this table down as gently as possible so that I can start cutting the legs. Now this thing's pretty heavy so I had to be fairly careful moving this thing around by myself, making sure that I'm not getting uh, pinched between it and the floor in any precarious ways. So our leveling feet work out to around 1.3 inches when they're completely screwed in and around 2.5 inches when they're fully extended. This means I'll remove around one and three quarters of an inch from each of these feet. To do so, I laid the table down and then used a cold cut chop saw to get the feet that I could actually get to with the cold cut chop saw. I was able to get to three feet with this chop saw. However, when flipping this table over to get to the last foot, it got pretty precarious because it's top heavy and also uh, there's some plate on the back of the table that makes it a little bit tippy. So I decided to go ahead and use the porta band to cut off the last foot. Using a long clamp that I bought from Harbor Freight, I clamped the top of the leveling foot to the bottom of the two by two square tubing legs, and then just welded it all the way around for all four legs. Once I had these welded on, I went around to each of them with the angle grinder and made sure to grind them flush just for aesthetics more than anything else. I had some fairly nasty welds 
in weird positions here. So I wanted to get everything nice and ground flat. The big negative of this doing it inside the shop is that there's a decent amount of cleanup afterwards uh, once you grind like that inside your shop. So this is what they look like with the leveling feet on them. The next step here is going to be getting this table back in the upright position. Now this was a little harder than I thought it would be. You know, this table is deceivingly heavy because not only is it 2x2 two two square tubing, but there's also a 3 8 piece of plate on the top of the table. So it's a little awkward for sure and I wanted to be extremely careful with it when I was moving it around. Now we're going to do the same thing and weld on our leveling feet to the lathe section's legs. After we get this done, the next step is going to be leveling the original table so that when we add on the lathe portion of the table, we can just get it level as well and the two table surfaces will be level with each other. This is going to be important whenever we move this table to a new location or a new shop down the road. We'll be able to just level it once and both the lathe portion and the mill portion will be level or at least parallel with each other. I don't think this step would have been necessary if my original table was built very square. However, I built this original table when I first got my welding machine and I am sure that it is not perfectly square. So I didn't have any cool toys like these fireball squares to use and I'm sure it's not square. So my solution is to make sure that both of the surfaces are level with each other. So this part was pretty basic. We just clamped up the fireball squares in the X, Y, and Z axes so that everything is nice and square and then got to welding this table up. Once we had all of the welds made on the new set of legs and the new crossbars for the table, I wanted to add these 45 degree struts in the back or gussets in order to add a little bit more rigidity to the lathe portion of this table. In the old table, I put one bar all the way across the back. However, I didn't have enough steel to duplicate that original design. Once we get everything welded up, I take the angle grinder to grind all the welds, and I grind all the welds flush on the top and the back of the table. Now as a temporary measure, I will be putting a wood top on this table. In the future, I would like to replace this wood top with another piece of 3 8 of an inch steel. However, that's pretty hard to come by nowadays for a reasonable price. So I put a bunch of struts going across the center of the table to support a piece of 3 quarters of an inch plywood. And of course, they didn't have a long enough piece of plywood, so I ended up having to cut a little extra piece here to fill the gap. So I have a wood top on this lathe table, and one day, hopefully, I'll be able to replace that. To attach the wood, I am going to be screwing up into the wood from the bottom. I'm drilling an eighth of an inch hole most of the way through the three quarters of an inch piece of plywood and then putting in these three quarter inch uh, little screws through these angle iron struts into our plywood board. I'm also going to add a little splash guard here in the back of the table. Uh, lots of lathe tables end up having a splash guard just because of the centrifugal force pushing a lot of fluids off of your workpiece. It can throw a bunch of fluids up on the wall and make a mess. So we're putting a nice little splash guard here uh, just to keep all the cuttings and fluids contained on the table. All right, so now that the table is done, we're going to get everything mounted to it. I card over the lathe here, put some rubber blocks under the wheel so it won't move on me, and very carefully move the lathe on to the new section of the table. Once I get it where I want it, I mark some holes with a pencil and drill some quarter inch mounting holes for this lathe. There are three of them. So I get the holes drilled all the way through the plywood and use three quarter inch bolts to hold the lathe onto the new table. So everything feels nice and sturdy here. In reality, it's more sturdy than the original table, which was a piece of MDF with some flashing on top of it, essentially. So this is a step up from the original table and uh, we'll see how it does. Next, we're going to move the mini mill onto the taller section. I'm going to be bolting this guy straight to the three quarters of an inch, I'm sorry, three eighths of an inch steel plate on the top. To do so, I'm going to drill some number seven holes and then use this new drill tap that I got in order to drill tap these holes to quarter 20. I've never used one of these. And I actually uh, got the link for this guy from House at House Works. And uh, he has another attachment. I just bought the tap, so I'll have to buy the other chuck attachment for it. But 
I was able to get the job done just with my normal drill. We got some quarter 20 holes tapped in this table in no time. So this is way faster than doing it by hand for sure. So once we got all four of these holes drilled and tapped, I scooted the mini mill over the holes and then just used some of these machinist screws to, uh, or machinist bolts to bolt the mini mill onto the table. And you can see here I have perfect clearance for my Hobart welding machine. And then we just moved the drill press and the porta band onto the original lathe table for a temporary measure. Alrighty guys, so we got now a sweet table. We have the mill mounted, we have the lathe mounted. So this is pretty much where these things are gonna stay. Now, as far as the rest of the organization goes, if y'all can see here, behind me where the press is, I think that's where the grinding room is gonna go. So I'm gonna build out the grinding room kind of this way <laughs> across here and hopefully have a spot that we can contain some of the grinding dust so that it doesn't get all over the rest of the shop. The drill press and the bandsaw will probably move over here to an island and hopefully that'll keep uh, everything still kind of tight and compact. One of the challenges with a large space is still staying efficient and I'd like to still stay efficient when I'm making knives or axes or whatever I'm going to be making. But this is the table and hopefully it's there to stay because moving it around can be kind of a pain. So with that, I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that like button down below and consider subscribing to the channel. Until next time, I'll catch y'all on the flip side.